prepare for war. Yeah, what's going on fam? It's your man VKJ and yes, I'm back with another video. This is for Tyler Perry's Ruthless Season 3, Episode 14. And yes, this one was an intense one. Definitely heating up with Lacey, Ruth, and the highest. And absolutely, we see a different side of your boy Daikon, all right? Don't forget to check out Episode 13 and 12 as far as the recaps. So let's break down episode 14 of Tyler Perry's Ruthless. So the name of this episode is Dilapidated, and it reads, Andrew finds himself in a standoff with Daikon's men and Sheriff Conley. Marvin enlists Zane to bring Lacey back into the fold, and Ruth has the highest right where she wants him. So where did we leave off? We left off with Daikon shooting down Lynn right on the spot and your boy Brian definitely wants revenge. He is angry, he is frustrated, he's at the same time scared, but Daikon does not care. He's like, I did you a favor, pretty boy. And of course, Brian is still concerned that's his wife, right? All in all, that's still his wife. And he's like, listen, she can't hear you because he's like, come on, baby, get up. And he's like, listen, she can't hear you because she's dead. Daikon is totally insensitive to the whole situation. He's like, listen, I'm not going to tell you again. Get up. Let's go. I'm taking you back to the punishment trailer unless you want me to take you out too. Brian is enraged at this point. He's like, you know what? I'm going to kill you one way or another. I'm going to find a way. So, of course, Daikon got the strap. He has the upper hand. Brian ain't going to do nothing because he doesn't want to get shot. He's like, yo, just you might as well take me out too. Just kill me too, right? So, you know, Daikon's like, listen, man, take this guy back to the punishment trailer. He's not going to do anything. And they just throw Lynn on the back of his shoulder. Look at him. Just picking Lynn up like she's a rag doll. Daikon is like, man, this is one hell of a night, right? He didn't want to do all of that, but he's faced with all of these challenges. Manny comes over and he's like, listen, did you find Andrew? Nothing, right? They're still coming up with nothing. So now here we go. Andrew is at Mr. Herbert's house with the strap. So he went in there and he's hearing some knocking in the bedroom. And he's like, what the heck is that? So he goes in and who do we see? Sheriff Conley getting busy with one of the rock cool girls. Oh, man. So, of course, he's telling him, get up, get up, put your hands up. And he's telling the girl, to handcuff the sheriff. And then the sheriff's trying to question Andrew. And Andrew's like, listen, you're not in a position to question anything right now. You know what I'm saying? He's like, well, you know, I'm keeping you from calling the FBI. And he's like, listen, I am FBI, you big dummy. <laughs> right? So trying to put him in handcuffs. But then the sheriff takes out his strap and grabs the girl. And he's like, I'm going to kill her. And Andrew's like, listen, I don't care, man. You think I care? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, Andrew's like, I don't even care right now. You know, I'm taking you in and everybody else, right? So yeah, the sheriff tries to pop one off at Andrew. Andrew ducks and gets away and goes in the other room. And now there's a standoff between them. Back at the campus, we see Daikon talking to River. And he's pissed off because he's telling River, yeah, you just took me in a circle and you did not show me these secret places. They're in plain sight. So now Manny comes over to Daikon and says, listen, we found Andrew. He is at Mr. Herbert's house. So they get on their ATVs and they are out to go get Andrew. So here we go with Elder Mother Mava talking to Zane. And Zane is pretty much just kind of, you know, sucking up to her to get Elder Mother to trust her. Of course, Zane, she has her own ulterior motives, really just to get in close with Elder Mother Mava so Elder Mother Mava doesn't know that Zane is really trying to help everybody escape, right? So she's like, listen, you don't got to go to the store today. The men are away. And you know what? They're going to get Andrew. And you don't have to worry. And I need your help with something. She's like, oh, okay. I'll help you out. Whatever you need, Elder Mother Marva. And really, she wants her to help with getting Lacey back on track. They're trying to convert Lacey back. So Zane is just playing along and she's doing a great job at playing along and getting Elder Mother Marva 
to trust her so then she can do what she can to help everybody escape and get out of there herself. So here we go with Joan, right? Joan and River, right? And Joan rolls up like, what are you wearing? What is this, right? You know, talking to River with his army fatigues on. He's like, listen, I'm a soldier. And she just starts busting out laughing like you are nothing of any type of soldier, right? She just gigging on him. He's laughing too. He's like, yeah, I know, but look at me, right? I'm a soldier, right? I'm I'm holding down the fort. And she just can't stop laughing at River because she knows who River really is, you know? So she can't stop laughing. She's gigging on him and everything else like that, right? But of course, they're like, listen, we still need to get this money. You know, where are the men? And it's like, yeah, the men are out. So he's trying to get some rest or whatever, whatever. But at the same time, River's trying to gig on her. It's like, yo, you know, maybe we can get you to get with some of the Raku men and see what you can do. Of course, she always takes offense to this. And I wonder why she's always taking offense to this, being that everybody is having, you know, activity going on. They're getting busy with each other. But she's always getting mad at River. We're going to find out more about that. But he's like, listen, you figure it out. You got a degree. I'm going to go get some rest. And of course, she's agitated by him. She's like, get out of here, right? Get out of here. They got that brother, sister type of vibe. So Joan is going and she's walking in the campus. And who does she hear? She hears the couple like, Joan, hey, Joan. And then talking through the fence like, hey, Joan, what's going on? And she sees them. and She's like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and like, you know, Joan is really acting surprised, like, oh, yeah, we're here. We're, we want to become members and everything else like that. Yeah. Can you come closer? And Joan is like, no, I actually have to go help with breakfast. And, you know, it's good to see you guys. And yeah, you know, we're, we're waiting on the highest to let us know if we could become members. He's like, OK, well, you go do your thing and I'm going to go do my thing. Right. And River's over there looking at her like, what the heck is going on? So they're like, OK, we'll talk to you later. So they go away and River's like, is that the couple that you was telling me about? Is that them? She's like, yeah. And he's like, listen, by all means, you got to make sure they don't come in here. Like they can't join the campus. Like, seriously, you don't want them to join. She's like, you think I don't know that? So now let's go to the punishment trailer. We got Zane. We got Elder Mother Marva and Lacey. And Zane is covering her nose because it's obvious that she sees Oliver He's dead and she can't stand the smell. He must stink, right? He must really, really stink. So now we got Lacey in there just depressed. And Elder Mother Mom was like, yeah, we're going to convert you. And, da, da, da. and she's like, just kill me. Just kill me. And Zane is like, don't talk, deserter. Don't talk, right? So she's acting like she's down with Elder Mother Marva. So she tells her to get, you know, Lacey up so they can get her going. And she's like, yes, we're going to clean you up. And, you know, we're going to stitch it up and everything. And she's like, say yes, Elder Mother Marva to Lacey. And she's like, yes, Elder Mother Marva. And, you know, Elder Mother Marva is so pleased because she sees that Zane is just kind of following suit. But Zane is playing her. She don't know that. You know, she's like, yes, Zane, you're, you're learning. You're learning how to be like an Elder Mother. So they get Lacey out of there and about to go do some stuff and stitch Lacey up. Now, at Mr. Herbert's house, we see that Daikon is there with one of the Raku members. He's like, yeah, I brought the girl for, you know, the sheriff, but I heard a shot. So Daikon tells the guys to go around the perimeter. Daikon calls the sheriff and say, hey, you OK? He's like, yeah, I'm in here, you know, with one of your girls. You know, thank you very much. But yeah, Andrew's in here and he got the strap. He's like, yeah, I know. I got my guys here. Don't worry about it. See if you can get out somehow, some way maybe out the back or something, but I got my guys out there, right? So he's calling for Andrew. Andrew, come on out. He's like, yeah, listen, man, he's not going to answer you, right? So the sheriff gets the Raku girl, and he's like, listen, we're going to go out back, but you come with me. You got to finish the job, right? <laughs> oh, God. So he goes around back, finally gets her out with his strap, and yes, they are now safe, but he's like, listen, man, like, he didn't call anybody. He didn't use my phone. But he's still in there, right? He's still in there. So Andrew sees that the sheriff got out. And he's like, dang, ah, oh, man. So he's like, listen, I'm taking the girl with me to finish the job. You know, uh, thank you very much, right? <laughs> Daikon's like, you're welcome, you're welcome. So 
Daikon's like, listen, Andrew, come on out, man. Stop playing. I'm warning you right now. And Andrew's like, listen, man, I could do this all day. Like, you know, you might as well get on your ATVs and get up out of here. So he sends some men to go inside. And of course, Andrew, you know, he's tactical, right? He's he pops both of these two guys coming in there. Man, listen, they have they are no match for Andrew. So he's like, listen, man, you might as well get on your ATVs and get up out of here because I'm not coming out. I'm not coming out. It's not happening. You might as well stop right now. So what happens? Daikon lights up this arrow and Manny shoots this arrow with fire on it into the house. What are they up to? Right. What is going on? So he shoots it in the house right into where Andrew is in the window. OK. And Andrew's like, what the heck? Like, he's surprised to see that coming into the window. And he's looking around like, what the heck is going on? They're laughing because they got their own little demonic plan to get Andrew out of the house. So Manny goes over to the window and he throws a grenade inside the house. <laughs> Your boy Andrew sees that. And he's like, oh, sh and he runs to the door and he jumps out just as the grenade explodes. As I predicted, they smoked out Andrew. He fell on the ground. Daikon goes over to him and says, listen, man, why are you making things so difficult? And they take him back to the campus. Meanwhile, on the campus, Elder Mother Marva is stitching up Lacey. No anesthetic, no nothing. She is screaming at the top of her lungs in pain. Of course, Zane is right there. And she is just watching as, yeah, Elder Mother Marv is putting vinegar on the wound. And she, oh, my God, it got to be so painful. And Lacey is just screaming and screaming. She's like, stop screaming, God. It's to help you. You're going to do this and do that. And Zane just can't stand all the screaming and everything that's going on. She is in so much pain. And she tells Zane to throw salt on the wound, which makes it even more painful. It's like, ah, man. So Elder Mother Marva says, listen, I got to go. I'm going to make breakfast for the highest. You stand in here and guard her. Make sure she doesn't get out. She's like, give me the keys. She's like, you don't trust me, Elder Mother Marva? No, I don't trust her. Don't worry about it. I'm going to make breakfast. You're doing so well. Just guard her and, and put salt on her wound every, you know, two hours or so. Right. And she's like, OK, OK. And she's like, just looking at Zane, like it makes me so proud. Meanwhile, your girl, Lacey, in pain, just laying there and screaming and so upset because she's just like, yeah, you know, they killed Oliver. And she's just so, so upset. And Zane goes to her like, listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, I'm acting this way. I'm just acting this way, you know, to get Elder Mother Marvel to trust me. And she's like, I just want to get out of here. I just want to die. And, you know, Lacey definitely is just really screaming and crying and everything. And of course, Zane feels real bad for her. She's like, listen, I'm going to get the elder mother to try to get me to, you know, torture you instead of her. So then, you know, I won't have to torture you. And she's like, I just want to die. They killed all of us. She's screaming. And yeah, it's real, real painful scene here for both Zane and for Lacey. Right. So now back in the kitchen. We got your girl, Joan, and she's making breakfast for the men. She's like, OK, OK. And Elder Mother Mom was like, that's good. That's good. She's like, yes, I'm going to make uh, food for the highest. And she's like, well, I wouldn't make food for the highest now because he's probably sleeping, still sleeping with Ruth. And she's like, Ruth slept with him. Ruth is still in there. She's like, yeah, you know, she went to him last night and they're still sleeping. I stopped by. To see, you know, the highest because I need to talk to him about some other business. But they said he's still sleeping. So, of course, Elder Mother Marv is like, really? She's not happy about this at all that the highest is sleeping with Ruth, even though Ruth is the wife to be. So why are you so upset? You know why? Because, yes, Ruth doesn't like Elder Mother Marva, and that's more power for Ruth. So, yes, <laughs> Joan is smiling like, yeah, it's going to be OK. You may, you may want to make his uh, breakfast a little bit later so it won't be cold. Right. But Elder Mother Marva is not liking the news of that. So here we go with Daikon and the men. They finally come back and they got your boy Andrew hog tied on the back of the ATV. Like, whoa, like he's some type of pig or something. So Daikon tells the men, go eat, you know, take uh, 
Andrew to the punishment trailer. So he walks over to the couple and he's like, hey, how you doing? You know, because they see what's going on. So he has to clean that up. And they're like, yeah, what happened to him? So Daikon lies and says, yeah, you know, he was drunk. So he was at a bar. So we went to go pick him up and we brought him back to get him cleaned up. And she's like, oh, you do that? Yeah, yeah. So she's like, yes, the highest is going to see you. And she's like, oh, really? And she, you know, holds herself and gets emotional. And he's like, yeah, you know, the highest is going to see you soon. As soon as he wakes up, he'll come and see you. And, you know, the guy's like, listen, we're sorry. You know, my wife's real emotional. And we find out that she lost a baby, right? They, you know, they lost a baby. And then her mother died months before that. And on top of that, the guy's, you know, parents don't accept her because she's black. And she says, yeah, they come from old money and pretty much they're racist and they don't want this guy, this white guy to be with, you know, this black girl. So we find out a whole lot about this couple. Meanwhile, here we go. your boy, Malcolm, he sneaks into the bus, finally got some strength. To sneak in the bus and he goes under the bed and he hides under the bed. Yeah, your boy Malcolm, somehow, some way, he's trying to get away, but he has to hide. So here we go with Manny and Lou, Lewis, and they're in there into the bus and they're talking and bragging about how they got, you know, Andrew and like, yeah, he's crazy to get away. And, you know, they're really praising each other. And Lewis is like, man, this is paradise, man. I get all the girls and all of this and that, man. Like, who would want to leave this? Right. So they're like, listen, we need to get some rest. We're going to get some rest and then give something to eat or whatever, whatever. Right. So they're in the bus. They're trying to get some rest. And your boy, Manny, goes over to the bed and lays on the bed while Malcolm is underneath the bed. We're going to see what happens in the next episode, how Malcolm gets out of this one. Now we got the highest and Ruth and they are not sleeping at all. They are having a little bit of fun, you know, in the bed together, just, you know, hanging out. Your boy Daikon runs in, doesn't knock a nothing. And he's like, highest, 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 right? He's like, man, do you not? Do you not knock to come in the door? This is like the third time Daikon comes in not knocking. Meanwhile, Ruth covers herself. And he's like, what's going on? Oh, we got we got Andrew. OK, great, great. All right. Is everything fine? Yeah, everything's fine. OK, cool. Right. He's like, all right, cool. Now he looks at Ruth and says, listen, don't stop. Get it, get it. Don't stop. Get it, get it. Right. So just as Daikon is about to leave, the highest stops him and says, Daikon, come here. I want you to sit over there and look and watch how she pleases me. Sit right over there. And he's like, yes, yes, highest. So he goes and sits down. And yeah, Ruth is getting busy with the highest. And look at his face. He's like, oh, my God. And he tells Ruth to look at Daikon while she is pleasing him. Wow. <laughs> so that is the recap for episode 14, season three. Family, let me know. Drop your comments below. How did you feel about this episode? This one was definitely crazy, fam. And as you know, if this is the first time finding me, definitely go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and absolutely, let's keep this thing going. I appreciate you all for watching. Definitely drop your comments below. I appreciate it. Let's get ready for the next episode coming. I can't wait to cover it for you. I appreciate you all for watching. And if you love this video, like this video, definitely watch this next one right here. Until next time, salute.